Is everyone present? Is everyone present? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So for the, today, we'll be learning about peritonitis and except, except site infection. Okay. Peritonitis and except site infection. So, uh, what is peritonitis? Does anyone know? Anyone? What is peritonitis? No, ma'am. Yeah. Peritonitis is the inflammation of the peritoneal cavity. Okay, inflammation of the peritoneal cavity. In simple, you get this. If you don't remember the whole sentence of the definition, you can always use an inflammation or infection of the peritoneal cavity. Okay. So, peritonitis is the infection or inflammation of the peritoneal cavity. Okay. Due to the infection by microorganisms, usually due to break up in closed system. Okay. Because, uh, have you ever, I'll show you, I'll show you a picture. Are you people able to see this the diagram there? The diagram right here, are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. I'll just try to bring it closer. One second, please. Yeah, that the most I can bring it to you. This is called peritoneal dialysis. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. So this is a perito uh, peritoneal dialysis, and I'll try to check out the chart. Wait. Okay, this one is the peritoneal dialysis. Yes? Yes. And this one right yes. here? This wall right here, this one, the line in black, did you see? Yes, ma'am. Are you able to see this black line? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That is the thin layer, thin layer of it, okay, of the peritoneum. Okay, and then yes. this is your catheter for peritoneal dialysis. This is your catheter. Go uh, through surgery if this is done. Okay, and then, and it's inserted right here in your urinary system, and then and this is your drainage pack. This act as your it acts like a uh, dialyzer, okay. All the waste, all the waste is brought here, and this one right here is your solution bag. So there'll be two bags one this one, and one this, okay. Yes, so this, ma'am. This is probably your, your peritoneal dialysis. This one, and hemodialy hemodialysis, and you'll see it in your hospital. So for now, that is the peritoneum.
Okay, so peritonitis is the. Can you tell me what is a peritoneal paralysis last time? Last time, what what was what is the peritoneal dialysis? What is peritoneal dialysis? Check your notes and give me the answer. It is a treatment for kidney failure. That's it. Where is it done? Where is it done? At home or in the hospital? In home. Yes. Okay. So, peritoneal dialysis is the infection or inflammation of the peritoneal cavity. Okay. And then along your nose, I'll give you a diagram where, where you see the thinning of the perit uh, peritonitis. Okay. And those are signs and symptoms. Okay, you have signs and symptoms. Your first sign and symptoms is abnormal pain. I mean, sorry, abdominal pain. Okay, abdominal pain. What is abdominal pain? Where do you usually feel this abdominal pain? In which area? Of your body. Belly area. Mm -hmm. Belly. Roman. Belly part. Yes. Okay. So your yeah, abdominal pain is your belly part, the belly area. You feel the pain usually uh, in the belly area, that's where the peritoneal dialysis is done. Okay. And the exit site infection and cancer, like you have to be taking care of the patient. You have to not take care means like uh, after the dressing and after all the surgery, everything is done by the, by the surgeon. The first dressing is always be, will always be done by the technician. Okay, means by you people. And your second, yes, like we'll come to that later. The second point is nausea and vomiting. And those I have explained nausea vomiting is very common. I think so. Yes. Is nausea and vomiting common? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. And then your first is abdominal pain. Second is nausea and vomiting. Third is blotting. What is blotting? Now, what does blotting mean? Where, where do you usually feel this blotting? Blotting is also uh, in your everything is related to your belly because the catheter is inserted in your belly. Okay, so blotting is uh, when your um, belly feels painful and stuff like that, you know, like you feel like very, what do I say, very tight and you feel there's full of gas, like kind of gastric, so that you'll have that feel. Means the patient doing this peritoneal dialysis will feel this, okay? They'll have these sign and symptoms, abnormal pain, nausea, vomiting. And blocking during the this is during the peritoneal dialysis. Okay, when they're doing it at home, these are the signs and symptoms that they have. Okay, they might have not everyone, they might have, and then there's can you repeat again what are the signs and symptoms? What, what would I say? Abdominal pain. Okay. Nausea and vomiting. Bloating. Yes. Abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting. Bloating. And diarrhea. Okay. Diarrhea is also one. In, in some, some patients, they also feel. Because during diarrhea, when you go for hospital, hospital duty, you will see everything you, you'll be seeing in practical. Even during hemodiasis, some people still want to pass. Uh, so this is one of our toilet and everything during dialysis. Okay. Some of the nice ways uh, may have a, be having problems like diarrhea also. Okay. And loss of ultra filtration. Okay. Loss of ultra filtration. Those are your points. Those are your signs and symptoms. Okay. Abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Loss of ultra filtration, blotting. 
and one more is uh, pore drainage. Pore drainage is uh, surface in your peritoneal if it's too means if it's too um, infected. Okay, you can say infected. If it's too infected, sometimes like the you know the waste does not uh, come out properly. The waste is not uh, the waste does not come out properly, so it may be due to like blockage. Because of the because there's some maybe like solid substance or anything, so there there will be then there will be problem in drainage also. Okay, the the bag that I showed you that uh what was that? The one is the uh, one is a solution bag. Okay. One is the solution bag and one is the one is the what drainage drainage what drainage bag okay am i saying audible yes ma'am yes ma'am yes okay so th there must they, there may be some problem th there can be problems like the drainage problem okay it does not come out properly, or the waste product does not come out properly. Okay, so that those are sign and symptoms, and then yeah, is it slight infection? And yeah, the first one just now was peritonitis, and the second is exit site infection. And okay, okay, so The first point is, listen to it carefully. The exit site dressing should be changed for five to seven days until there is until there is excessive drainage. Okay, is that? Do I have to explain that point? I'll I'll read it again. The exit site. The exit site dressing should be changed for five to seven days until there is excessive drainage. In this peritoneal dialysis, okay, after the surgery and everything is done, you, so this patient will be going back home for dialysis. The patient will be doing dialysis back home, okay. So after five to seven days, only then you can change the dressing. And the dressing should be changed only if there is excessive drainage means excessive like uh, there'll be like few coming out sometimes from the from where you insert your catheter there's possibility that few will be few will come out from there okay from where you insert your catheter yes you understand because after the surgery dressing will be done right after every surgery this uh, dressing is to be done for every patient that goes under surgery Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so the exit side dressing. Yes, yes. Ma'am, you speak uh, faster. Can you speak a little bit slowly? Okay, fine. So which, which part did you not get? Tell me. Ma'am, the exit side. Okay, fine. So, I said in every patient, that goes under surgery, that goes for surgery, when they come out, obviously, like it's compulsory for every patient, they, they get dressing done, right? The surgeon does the dress, uh, I mean, the nurse in charge or whatever in the OT department, they do the dressing for the patient after surgery. Yes, no, have you ever seen? Means any kind of surgery, it's not only patient, any, any kind of surgery after surgery, what do they do? They cover the, the surgery area, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma you people have seen, yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so, like I said, when, so that, that, that dressing that is done, okay, that dressing that is done should not be changed for five to seven days. Should not be changed for five to, should not be changed for five to seven days, okay? Unless there is uh, excessive fluid or there's excessive uh, drainage that comes out from the peritoneal catheter. Okay. 
Yes? Is that point understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what it says is the exit, the exit side dressing should not be changed for five to seven days until there is ex excessive drainage. Okay, that's your first point. And the second point is first dressing should be done or performed by a trained person and then draw to the patient. Okay. So your first dressing, the first dressing that's done after surgery should be done by a trained person. Means like nurse, it can be nurse, it can be you people, technician people. It only has to be done by you people. Okay. It cannot be done by this, you know, just like uh, your family members or unless they're family members that have some training for this dressing. Okay. So the first dressing should always be done by, by who? Tell me your first dressing should be, the first dressing of a patient should be done by who? Yes. Nurse. Nurse. Yes, nurse or? Nurse or? What will you people become after you're done with your studies? Technician. Yeah, so it can be, it be done by a nurse or technician. Okay, it can be done by you people, it can be done by the nurse. Okay, so the first dressing should always be done by a trained person. Okay, should always be done by? Repeat after me, should always be done by? Always be done by? by always be done by? Asking you people, yeah. should always be done by who? The nurses we, and the nurses and technician. Technician people. Okay. Nurses and technician. Yes. Means basically should be done by trained people. Because even you people will be taught how to do dressing and everything. Okay. So, okay. second point, listen to it carefully. Second point, first dressing should be done or performed by a trained person. Okay. And then after, after it's done by you people for the first time, then while doing, at the same time, you can teach someone of the family members or the person, or that person himself or herself. Means you can teach them how to do the dressing. Got it? You can teach them. After you do, the first dressing should always be done by you. And then while you're doing, at the same time, you can also explain it to them. Yes? Understood? Yes, Second point? Everyone? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Who, 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 no? Who does not understand? Me, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I said, the, fir the first dressing of a patient, when you're doing dress, uh, I mean, when the, Okay, there's a, there's a patient, fine? And then that person went for surgery. Means to do peritoneal dialysis at home, fine? And then after, obviously after a week, uh, you'll have to change the dressing after a week. Okay, so when the person comes, the person will be coming to the hospital for dressing for dressing of the surgery. And that dressing should be done by the trained person, okay? By the trained person, that dressing should be done. And during, I mean, when you're doing that uh, dressing for that patient, you should also explain it to them. Like this is how you do it. Means you're telling them like this is how you should uh, do the dressing and everything. Like, you know, from the first, like, uh, when you're wiping the, cleaning it with, uh, what do we call it, betadine, cleaning it with betadine, and then again, next step is you clean it with spirit on top after that. That's how you do cleaning, right? You will learn. Don't worry, you will learn. You will know all of that once you reach the hospital. So, the second point is, the first dressing should be done by, a, should be done or performed by a trained person and then talk to the patient. It's very simple. There's nothing that you shouldn't understand also. From the point itself, it's very simple. First dressing should be done by perform a, first dressing should be done or performed by a trained person and then talk to the 
participation. Yes, got it. Second point. Okay. And the third point is whenever you're doing the dressing, always remember to wear a mask. Okay. Whenever you're doing a dressing, always remember to wear your what? Mask. Mask. So that's your third point. Mask is compulsory whenever you're doing, you're doing your dressing. And how do you do dressing? Okay. First, first of all is you have your betadine. Betadine. Yes, you know what betadine is? Have you seen in the hospital when you go like this half? It's a brownish in color, right? First, yes. Yeah, first you like take a you have to have your bowls. It means bowl is a sterile, a sterile bowl. Okay. This should be sterile. And then in one bowl you have your betadin, in one bowl you have your spirit. Okay, and then you have gauze. Okay. And you have your first you, you won't be holding, you can also hold your hand. But if you're holding your hand, the cotton will always be in a square shape, right? So all the edges, you pull all the edges, hold all, I mean, the four edges of the cotton pad. Okay, so you hold it, keep it in a bit of uh, and then you wipe the area in a circular motion. Okay, means it sh you should clean it circle. You should go. Clockwise, okay. Do you know what clockwise is? Yes. Okay, so okay, so what should you have? You tell me first. What should you have? One, you'll have two bowls, okay. When you're doing a dressing, you'll have two sterile bowls, not just any random bowl, sterile bowl, okay. And then in there you'll have one betadine, one with spirit got it understood yes. that part yes. if you don't understand please ask me to repeat stop me and ask me to repeat don't don't ask me that you don't know it you know that everything's completed stop and ask me to repeat so one will be your betadine and one will be your spirit okay so cotton we can also take with a forcep that the the forceps that so like kind of a scissor where you hold your gauze, gauze or cotton. Okay. Do you know what a forcep is? Yes, no. Okay. Forcep, forcep. It's like a scissor. You Google it yourself. Okay. I'll show you. This one. This one right here, can you see this? Yes, ma'am. That is your yes, forcep. That is your forcep, yes. Do you know it now? <laughs> yes? Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that is your forcep. And so you'll be needing that. Okay. So you'll be holding it. Holding it, uh, holding the cotton, the cotton pad or the gauze with a forcep, and you dip it in the bicarb. I mean, it's from my skin. You dip that uh, cotton pad or gauze in the betadine, and then wrap it in a clockwise motion around the catheter. Yes, understood. Okay, and then once that is done. And don't repeat. When you're doing when you're doing the dressing, when you're wiping, 
when you're wiping it, do not repeat too long in the same place. Because then again, after rotating, you're bringing back the bacteria again. So if you start at one point, you should end as well at that point. Okay, from where you start, you should end there, and then again, you go up, then end again, again, like that. So you always start from down, from exactly from where the catheter is, and then you wrap it clockwise. From where you start, from that point, you stop, and then again, you go up, do the same thing. Okay. Yes? Have you people, have you people learned first aid in your previous class? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so uh, doing first aid, I think like these were all of you simple things like dressing and everything. Yes? Yes or no? Yes or no? Were you, were you taught regarding all dressing and everything? Yes or no? <laughs> I'm not understanding you because is it a yes or is it a no? No, ma'am. You were not addressing? Okay. Ma'am, we studied only in theory, not practicals. Yeah, exactly. In theory, I'm asking. Because practical, you're not going to see it unless you come to the hospital. Who's going to give you all of that yes, and then you know, show you? That's why I said, if you're taught, taught in theory, then you should know it. how you're supposed to do your dressing. And after that, you use, after you're done with the betadin, the next you use spirit, okay, to clean it again. Go for the second round. Again, it should be the same, uh, same thing, clockwise, okay. And start, always start from down and then go up. After that is done, Cover it with a cotton pad or anything, and like sometimes in some cases there will be infection, and in in that case if there's infection, ointment will be prescribed by doctors. Okay, an ointment will be prescribed by doctors, and that ointment you apply and then cover it with gauze and then cover it with microfilm. Then that is it. That's how your dressing is done. And so your next point is. The skin around the exit side may be pink, similarly to the healing scar. So have you seen if you cut your hair and anything, and when, you're, when your scar is healing, it usually turns pink. It's pinkish in color. Have you ever seen? I think most of you have been cut, uh, most of you have scars or anything. So when it's getting healed, what color do it turn? What color does your scar turn? Yes, no one. Have all you have? Have you ever been cut by a knife, or else have you ever fallen and got cut or anything like that? Yes or no? Yes. So when that when that. When that scar is healing, what color does it turn to? What color it is? Red. Red? Then when when the moment you get that, what color it is that? If that is red. Then. The moment you get that, you got cut. Or you fall, you fell down. What color is your scar then? When it is very fresh, what color it is? Everyone should know this. Okay. Mama, why, why are you people so quiet? Yes, what about the rest of you? Only can come to your nose and have a long rest of you know nothing. And when your scar is healing, then if you say when you're fresh, when you're freshly cut or freshly hurt, it turns red. So 
Kan feeling gua kalau ada sesuatu. Brown. Brown. Man think. Think, okay, and then? Stop red. Stop red, okay. Ini what else? Reddish brown. Reddish brown. Anyone else? What do you think it is? Whenever you see your, your, your scar is healing, it's always pink. Okay, it's always pinkish. When your scar is healing, it's always pinkish. Okay, some some you said brown. Maybe you're talking about the the what do you call it? That skin is when you peel that skin out, it's always pinkish inside. Because that uh, that skin will fall automatically. Once your scars fully heal, it'll turn pink. Okay, so the skin around the exit side may be pinkish, similarly to the healing scar, or may have brownish or purplish discoloration. Okay, so if it's healing, you have a pinkish uh, color of the of the su surgery area. You see a pinkish color. That's what I mean. See, you have a pinkish color. Okay, of the of the what of the surgical area. You see there's a pinkish color. And if the in, in some cases you see brownish color or purplish. Purplish means it's like it's um, you can say there's an inf infection because it, uh, the patient will automatically feel the pain. Okay, like when you fall down. No, not before. Okay, if you get yourself hurt, if you get punched or whatever, you have the blue, the blue purplish thing, right? You see, if someone gets gets yes, punched, yes. yeah, you see that, right? There's a, a green, green purplish thing. Sometimes, like depending on the person, depending from person to person, that the color is. There's a purplish pink or red. You can see. Yes, have you ever seen? Have you ever gotten punched also? Have you ever seen your friend? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you people understanding that point or not? Should I repeat? Should I repeat that same point again? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I have one few minutes. I'll end this class and join again after this, okay? I'll end this class and join again.